yours is a voice of criticism we don't often hear in the United States. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then there are anti-Semitic. We're terrorists because, because we're occupiers. All terrorists and murderers. But, but we, nah, no, no see, we're not occupiers. Why, that's the same we'll anti-Semitic argument we've heard over and over again. No, that's oh, the same anti-Semitic argument we've heard that over is and over and over again. Attack. Look, look, Larry, I think one at a time, guys. That is not a vicious attack. That is, Larry, I'd like to respond to some of these points that we made. All right, let's go back to Sheila. We don't even need to get into that. That is terrible. We don't need to get into that. And in fact, of course, the bombing of Yemen goes back way before the last few weeks. It was uh, we've we've had drone strikes and everything in Yemen uh, over the past four or five years. Oh, right, in connection with the uh, Lackawanna Six and all right, that. Right, right. There've been a number of attacks, and uh, most of which were uh, we did not uh, credit them to us. Uh, but now, of course, we are. And uh, yeah, but it's uh, you know it's always the same story. Don't we ever get it that if you're if you're messing around in these other places and you're killing people in these other places? Uh, there are people that are going to try to get even. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, Scott, I, I just, it's, it's hopeless the way these things play out, at least in my mind. Well, uh, you think the people that run the CIA Counterterrorism Center are as stupid as the people who cover these issues on TV? Because, you know, I saw Ron Paul say to Larry King last night, look, man, we bomb them, then they bomb us back. History didn't begin on September 11th. It didn't begin on Christmas Eve. It began way back in the day, and America's been bombing the Middle East in general, supporting their dictators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We started it, and now we have trouble. They're terrorists because we occupy them, he said. And Larry King and Ben Stein and Sheila Jackson Lee looked at Ron Paul like they couldn't even understand what he was saying. They were like, oh, what do you mean America started it? That, huh? Well, Ben Stein called uh, Ron Paul an anti-Semite. Right, even though he didn't mention that, you know, Osama bin Laden and Mohammed Atta both said that the reason they did it is American support for Israel. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even mention that part of it at all. He didn't say anything about Israel at all. Well, this is the whole point. I mean, if you control the narrative, you control the narrative in such a way as to make it say what you want. And Ron Paul is saying, no, no, this is not what the narrative is. There's a much bigger narrative out there, a much bigger story. And, of course, he's absolutely right. Michael Shoyer, Shoyer founded the CIA's counterterrorist center, the bin Laden unit, in uh, 1996. We haven't progressed very far since 9-11. We're fighting an enemy uh, that basically doesn't exist. The, the, the American people for the last four presidents, including their, our latest president, our, our now president, um, continue to tell Americans that we're fighting an enemy that's motivated by hatred for our freedoms and our liberties, women in the workplace, liquor after after the, the work day, um, and and is so therefore a fanatic, limited number of folks. Nothing could be further from the truth. What are they motivated by? They're motivated by the impact of our foreign policy, particularly our support for tyranny. Uh, we've just reinforced the status of the Yemeni dictator, for example. Uh, we support the police state that governs Saudi Arabia, that governs uh, Jordan, that governs Egypt and Algeria. Um, we give unqualified support to the Israelis in terms of money and armaments. These are the motivations of the enemy. And it's what our politicians want you to believe, that we're being attacked because we have women in the workplace and primary elections every four years uh, for the presidency. If we were being attacked by people with those grievances, they wouldn't even rise to the level of a lethal nuisance. The politicians don't want to talk about the impact of our support for Israel. They don't want to talk about their abject failure in doing anything about energy self-sufficiency over the past 40 years. They don't want to tell us that our sons and daughters are dying in order to support tyrannies in places like Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Algeria. Uh, until we start to talk about those things, we are not, we are fighting an enemy, as I said, that doesn't exist. This is a very, uh, precise enemy. 
There is no evidence, at least in the, in the, in the corpus of, of materials from Osama bin Laden and, and Ayman Zawahiri, that they're, they're uh, extremely angry and ready to blow themselves up because we have McDonald's and Budweiser. That's a nonsense argument, but it's the basic argument given to us by our last four presidents. I'm interested in the question of motivation of these hijackers. Uh, and I, my question is really directed to the agents. But what have you found out about why these men did what they did? What motivated them to do it? I, I believe they feel a sense of outrage against the United States. They identify uh, with uh, the Palestinian problem. They identify uh, with people who oppose repressive uh, re regimes. And I believe they tend to focus their anger on the United States. And why don't we talk about that? Because IPAC and other influential American Jewish groups are, are extraordinarily involved in the funding of American political campaigns and um, have the ability to reach out and, and make sure that people lose their jobs or, or are um, uh, otherwise uh, 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 hurt uh, if they dare to criticize Israel. I lost a job last year simply because I su said that I suspected Mr. Obama would, would maintain traditional U.S. policy toward Israel, and that cost me a, a job that was uh, both a position and a, and a salary. Where, did, where was the job? At the Jamestown Foundation. I was a, I was a writer there. Uh, I published an article every two weeks, and I said just kind of flippantly at one of their conferences that I thought Obama doing the, uh, what I called the Tel Aviv two-step uh, uh, during the presidential election campaign to get closer to the Israeli lobby meant that he wouldn't change policy toward Israel, and that was enough to have uh, the donors to that foundation uh, indicate that I should be terminated. Well, one of the, the, the big problems is, and, and here goes the grenade, uh, Israel. The second you mention the word Israel, uh, the nation Israel, the concept Israel, uh, many in the American press become very defensive. Uh, we're not allowed to be highly critical of the state of Israel. Uh, and when you, and the other thing we're not allowed to do is discuss the notion that Israel and the notion of Israeli interests may in fact be dictating what America is doing. That what we're doing in the Middle East may not be to the benefit of America's national security, but to Israel's national security. But see, we don't want to talk about that because one of the great success stories out there is the pro-Israeli lobby that has successfully enabled uh, themselves to blend the two together so that when we speak of Israeli interests, they say, no, we're speaking of American interests. He's strong um, and has a lot of money. And the, the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong and they are strong in this country. As you know, uh, they have power, which it's okay, they are talented people and they have power, money and uh, media and other things. And their attitude is Israel, my country, right or wrong, the identification. And they are not ready to hear criticism. And it's very easy to blame people who criticize certain acts of the Israeli government as anti-Semitics and to bring up the Holocaust and the suffering of the Jewish people and that's, that justify everything we do to the Palestinians.